Far be it from me to question the great Al Hewing. He wrote Immortal Hulk, The Ultimates, X-Men Red. All these are bangers. But the way that this book ends, man. That's what he does in the next two issues. My name is Dorian. This is SEM Comics. We are covering the complete Sins of Sinister series. Today, we are covering Storm and the Brotherhood of Mutants, number one. So it starts off with Araco, well, Mars, which Araco is on, and it has Storm saying, yes, I remember how Araco died as you see these ships attacking Mars. So then on the next page, we do a flashback to Sins of Sinister number one, which we covered here on the channel. The link will be in the playlist in the description, but she explains how she went to go question the Quiet Council on Kokoa because he felt like Araco changed for the better, they changed for the worse, and then she found out because Sinister had uh, Emma Frost and Professor Xavier try to take over her mind, but her fellow rock guy helped her out and she had a failsafe put in to where she can get away she wanted to go to war right then and there but mystique and destiny stopped her and told her to wait so she rallied up her forces and she said she was ready for anything but then she said she wasn't ready for everything because sinister took over a hell dimension and they pretty much were sending everything they had at Araco, and they just didn't have enough. So Mars was destroyed, wiped out, and the remaining Araki are pretty much hiding amongst the asteroids that Mars eventually got broken up into. And on one of those asteroids, we see that Storm is talking to Irene Adler, which is destiny for those of you that don't know. And she's pretty much questioning her, saying, you told us to wait, but I'm wondering if we would have just went ahead and went to war earlier, would we have stood a better chance? So I feel like Rob from Comics Explain, ironically, explain Destiny the best. Destiny is a precog. For those of you that watched the Minority Report now, this is a 21 year old movie and I can't believe I'm saying this. And there are people that are watching this video that weren't even born yet. So a lot of you guys might not know what I'm even talking about. In this movie, you had three beings that when you put them together, they had the ability to predict the future in a sense. You could think of them like in a basketball player who's a 95% free throw shooter. It seems like they never miss, but there are instances when they do miss. Well, that's how these precogs were in the Minority Report. It seemed like what they said always happened, but then there's that one time when it doesn't. So like Rob said, this is a lot how destiny works. If she tells you something's going to happen tomorrow, you can five star lock it. It's going to happen. If she tells you something's going to happen five years from now, there are a lot of things that can happen within that time frame that can change that prediction. So eh, I wouldn't bet the farm on if she tells you something's going to happen five years from now. It still could happen, but it also might not happen. So. If you guys are picking up what I'm putting down. So now Destiny gets uppity with Storm and she's like, look, I guess you haven't forgiven me for what happened, but I do know this. You will not kill me. At least today, you will not kill me. And then Storm's like, this ain't the time or the place to be playing that prediction bullshit. And Storm pretty much backs up what I just said about Destiny. She says, if your predictions could fail, then what you told us can be forgiven. But if you were just trying to arrange the chess pieces to fit what you want to do and our deaths was going to happen no matter what, you just wanted it to happen at this certain time, then you shouldn't have come here. But then Storm goes, if you even came here and she goes, John and it's John Ironfire. He comes out of nowhere and then just stabs the hell out of Destiny talking about your body language and your vocal patterns were different come to find out it's mystique so now for the those of you that think oh no he killed mystique no he did not kill mystique mystique has a healing factor it's not as good as wolverines but it's pretty damn good so what does happen to her she'll be just fine and she'll be fine pretty quickly so storm asks mystique why she come here and again mystique is about to back up what i just said about destiny she goes she predicted that if she came here that she'll be safe but some things you don't gamble with so i decided to come wearing my wife's face to deliver a message so she goes how would you like a to live again 
So the whole reason why Sinister is able to do all this is because he has the clone Myra McTaggart who still has her mutant powers. So he's able to use her, start her life, and then if something happens, he just goes ahead, kills her, and then he starts the whole process over. Because she's able to live 10 different lives and have 10 different scenarios. Mystique knows where Sinister Lab is. It's on Mirror Island. And she's asking Storm if she will go with her to take it. So for this mission, I present to you the Brotherhood. We have Storm who has control of weather on any planet in the universe. We have Cable who merged with one of their rock eye known as Xylo who has been around for like over 10,000 years. So not only does he have all that information that Xylo has, Xylo also took out the techno organic virus so now Cable is free to use 100% of his powers so he is now an Omega level mutant. We have Kor whose mutant powers is to boost the ability to anybody near her. Her father is the legendary Fisher King of Arako. You have Wizkid that has the ability to create and command any technology he imagines including the cloaking device they're using to stay out of Sinister's radar. You have Ironfire which we already met earlier. He can transmute his molten blood into any metal known and use them as weapons. We have Quick, who is the fastest being currently living. She is also the youngest of the Brotherhood. And to round it off, guest starring we have Mystique, who can change into anybody and also has a pretty good healing factor. So they all show up to Mirror Island and Wizkid and Mystique get into it right off the rip. Wizkid asks Mystique how those guns are that he designed for her and she goes oh they're pretty good are you asking me because i'm going to use them as soon as we're done here on you guys and then quick comes over and says try it and pretty much has her knife to mystique's neck and then whisk is like well there's quick and also too i designed them to where there's a locking mechanism that won't let you use them on any member of the brotherhood but then he goes with that aside i think we're gonna be way too busy to bicker amongst ourselves and then it shows how sinister has these chimeras that are mixed with maggot and Merrill. so they're definitely gonna be a handful to deal with so then storm creates this huge lightning filled tornado and pretty much blasts it to the ground she tells iron fire and whiz kid to follow her down the tunnel that she just created and she tells the others to stay on the surface and keep fighting so they go down to the lab and there's a bunch of chimeras waiting on them including a living force field that's around the myras and whiz kids all like all in and ooing about this technology that sinister has created he says it's impressive but I think I know a way around it. And he asks his Storm and Ironfire to hold off the other Chimeras for a little bit while he works. So on the surface, they're dealing with the other Chimeras and all of a sudden they find out that Mystique is like this hologram. Couldn't find out she was posing as Wiz Kid. She stabbed Storm right in the back and through her stomach. And then whoever she's working for pretty much teleports Mystique out of there plus the Myras that are in the lab. So this is a problem because that looked like a fatal blow. She has no resurrection protocols and even if she did, it doesn't matter because Sinister is in charge of it right now anyway. So then it flashes to the real destiny and she's talking to somebody. Once you turn the page, we see it's Dr. Stasis who has a club symbol on his forehead, which means he is another version of Sinister, but also means that Orcus isn't as dead as what we thought they were in since the sinister number one so now please let me know in the comments are you as pissed as i was when i first read this al hewing you got two more books